Hi folks, some of my students in the linear control class requested me to do an, an extra example for the transfer matrix. So I decided to make it a video presentation and to share it with you as well. Here is the example. Solve for the transfer matrix G hat of S if the state space matrices are given as we have the matrix A, which is a 2 by 2 matrix. Matrix A reads with the coefficients of minus 2, 1, 0, and minus 1. From this matrix, we know that the system is modeled with two states, x1 and x2. The B matrix is given to us as 2 by 1, which is basically a column vector, and that means the system has one input, we're going to call it R1. Now keep in mind that matrix B relates the two states to the input. That's why we have two rows for the two states by one column that stands for the input. The matrix C, which is given to us to be 2, 1, 1, and 2, is also a 2 by 2 matrix. Now matrix C relates the output to the states of the system. So it is clear that we have two outputs by two states. So the outputs of the system going to be Y1 and Y2. And of course, they are two outputs. The D matrix, which is a two by one matrix, and that relates the outputs of the system to the input of the system. We were able to obtain all those information from the system using the size of those matrices. So the size of the matrices determines the number of internal states of the system, the number of output of the system, and the number of inputs of the system. Our objective is to solve the transfer matrix. Now keep in mind that the transfer matrix is the general case of the transfer function. The transfer function relates the single output of the system to the single input of the system, where the transfer matrix relates the multiple outputs of the system to the multiple inputs of the system. In this particular example, we have two outputs and one input, but they can be as many outputs and we can also have as many inputs in the system. So we will start from the definition of the transfer matrix and we know that the definition of the transfer matrix says that G hat of S will equal to C hat times the inverse of S times I hat where I hat is the identity matrix minus A hat multiplied by B hat plus D hat. The computation of this matrix is a little bit involved. The easiest way to evaluate this matrix is to evaluate the S hat minus A hat inverse first. The inverse of S times I hat minus A will equal to, when we evaluate that, we're going to multiply S times the i hat, but we know that the i hat, the identity matrix, has ones on the diagonal elements and zeros everywhere else. When we multiply that by s, what we end up having is s on the diagonal elements only and zeros everywhere. Now we will subtract from that a. When we do that for the first element, the first element is a diagonal element, so we're going to have S minus the value of A, which is minus 2. So that becomes S plus 2. At the second diagonal element, we have S minus the minus 1, because A's element reads minus 1, and that becomes S plus 1. Again, because we are subtracting A from S times I hat, we will invert the sign of the elements in the off-diagonal A matrix. So the first off-diagonal element becomes minus 1, 
and the second one stays zero because negative of the negative zero is zero. Now we need to evaluate the inverse of the s times i hat minus a hat. This is a two by two matrix. Its inverse is obtained very easily, which is one over the determinant of the matrix. The determinant of the matrix is the product of the diagonal elements minus the product of the off diagonal elements. This need to be multiplied by the matrix where we switch the location of the diagonal elements. So the first diagonal element becomes S plus one and the second diagonal element becomes S plus two. The off diagonal elements, we will invert their signs so the minus one becomes plus one and the zero remains at zero. So that's how we calculate the inverse of the two by two matrix. Basically it is one over the determinant of the matrix. We switch the location of the diagonal elements and we invert the sign of the off diagonal elements. The next step is to simplify the values of the determinant. In this example, minus one times zero is zero. And if we want to, we can expand the brackets terms of the S plus two and the S plus one, but we will keep them the way they are over here because the second term will be zero. In general, we want to expand the brackets if the second product term is non-zero. So the inverse of the matrix becomes as follow. S times I hat minus A hat inverse will equal to one over S plus two times S plus one. We ignore the zero term here times the matrix elements, which they're going to be the same that are S plus one plus one zero and S plus two. Now that we calculated the inverse of S times I hat minus A hat, we need to multiply by the C hat matrix. So we can say that C hat times S times I hat minus A hat inverse will equal to, we treat this portion as a scalar, so we factor it out. So we're gonna say one over S plus two times S plus one, then we go going to state the C matrix, which has the elements of two, one, one, and two. And then we are going to state the remaining matrix of the inverse matrix, which has the elements S plus one, plus one, zero, and S plus two. Over here, we have a matrix multiplication, a two by two matrix times two by two matrix. And to evaluate that, we will have the rational function one over S plus two times S plus one. And then we will go to the matrix multiplication. Remember that when we do matrix multiplication, we multiply the row elements by the column elements. So the first element will be the result of the first row in the first matrix times the first column in the second matrix. So we will have two times S plus one plus one times zero. Now the second element, we will have the result of the first row times the second column so we will have two times one plus one times S plus two. The third element is the result of the second row times the first column. So that will be one times S plus one plus two times zero. Finally, the fourth element is the result of the second row times the second column. 
and that is the result of 1 times 1 plus 2 times s plus 2. So once again, when you multiply matrices, you multiply the row times the column, and you do that for each entry in the product of the matrix. Now we need to obtain the value of each term within the matrix, so we can say that this will equal to, we will keep the scalar rational function outside the matrix, and the first element becomes 2s plus 2, and the second element becomes s plus 4, where the third element becomes s plus 1, and finally the fourth element becomes 2s plus 3. Now the second step in evaluating the transfer matrix is to multiply the result by the matrix b hat. So we can say now c hat times s times i hat minus a hat inverse times b hat will equal to, again we will still have the a scalar rational function outside the matrix, so we will have 1 over s plus 2 times s plus 1, and over here we're going to have the matrix that we obtained from the previous result, which is the 2s plus 2, the s plus 4, which has the entries of 2s plus 2, s plus 4, s plus 1, and 2s plus 3. We're going to multiply that by matrix b hat, which is a column a matrix with the values of 1 and 1. Again, over here we do matrix multiplication and we are going to multiply the first row times the column and then we will move to the second row and we will multiply by the column. So when we do that, we will say that will equal to, again we're going to factor the scalar rational function outside the product and then what we're going to have is 2s plus 2 times 1 plus s plus 4 times 1. So that's when we multiply the first row by the first column. We will have 2s plus 2 times 1 plus s plus 4 times 1. And when we multiply the second row by the column, we will have s plus 1 times 1 plus 2s plus 3 times 1. Now we need to evaluate the value of each element within the product matrix and at the same time we will bring in that scalar rational function inside the matrix. When we evaluate the first element we will have 2s times 1 plus s times 1 that is 3s plus we're going to have 2 times 1 plus 4 times 1 that is 6 so the first element becomes 3 s plus 6 over s plus 2 times s plus 1. I have brought in the scalar rational function inside the matrix. And for the second element, when I evaluate s times 1 plus 2s times 1, that will be 3s. And then when I multiply 1 times 1 plus 3 times 1, that becomes 4. So the first element will be 3s plus 4 over s plus 2 times s plus 1. The last step in evaluating the transfer matrix is to add the matrix D hat to the last matrix that we have evaluated. Now we can say that C hat times S i hat minus A hat inverse times B hat plus D hat will equal to G hat of S, which is the transfer matrix, that will equal to the last matrix we have obtained plus the matrix D hat, which is a column vector that has the entries of 0 and 1. Now we will bring in the entries of the D matrix inside. So the first element will remain the same because when we add 0 to it, it will stay the same. The second element, on the other hand, we will add 1 to it. 
Now we need to simplify the algebra of the matrix entries. So the first element will remain the same, where the second element, we are going to have a common denominator to do the addition. So basically we're going to do cross multiplication. And what we will end up having is 3s plus 4 plus s plus 2 times s plus 1 over s plus 2 times s plus 1. Now when we simplify the algebra, what we will end up with is the first element is already simplified, so we keep it the same, and the second element becomes s squared plus 6s plus 6 over s plus 2 times s plus 1. And this is the transfer matrix of the system. The system is very simple, but the mathematics to obtain the result is somewhat involved. So that makes us appreciate MATLAB and Simulink to be used in control theory. Good luck to you.